So you're using an AI IDE, expecting it to follow your coding style, naming convention, and architecture's rules. But somehow, it keeps ignoring some of your guidelines. So you're wasting time correcting mistakes that shouldn't be happening in the first place. So the AI forgets key details between session and worse, generate code that doesn't align with your project best practices. So know what? What if you could train your AI IDE to remember everything? Your project structure, rules, and preferences, so it become a coding assistant that actually works the way you want. So in this video, I will be covering all of this, how memory works, what you need to do in order to make sure that your code doesn't get truncated, uh, how to make sure that it for your preferences, and you'll know how to use it effectively, and how to make sure your coding rules are actually followed. So Windsurf and Cursor use memory a little bit differently. And in this video, I'll try to do my best to break down how each site works. I find that Windsurf has a better documentation on how the memory actually works than Cursor. So I'll do my best to try to explain you how they both use memories differently. But there are some concepts that are very similar in both IDE. They both have user-generated memory and auto-generated memory. And the way those are auto-generated obviously depend on which ID you're using. All right, so what are user-generated memory? So user-generated memory are the, the rules that you are creating in one of those ID. In Windsurf, it will be your Windsurf rules, which are more like your workspace rules or your global rules. And in Cursor, it will be your Cursor rules or the Cursor folders rules or your global rules. So anything that is user-generated, where you want it to remember to do things a certain way, to follow things a certain way, those are the rules that you are generating yourself. And you can think about user-generated memories essentially has rules since those are the rules that you are writing yourself. And anything else that is auto-generated is stuff that, for example, when you're like writing a conversation and chatting with the AI and it's trying to memorize your conversation by summarizing it, or when it has context awareness of your code, or when it's indexing your code base in order to have more understanding of the context, those are like the auto-generated memories that the IDE will actually try to memorize to take better action in the future when uh, following your objectives. So how long can your rules be? We know how those rules can be on Windsurf because they've actually shared this information. If the total of your global rules and local rules are greater than 12,000 characters, then your global rule will take priority and then your workspace rule will be used. If you are using Windsurf and your rules are a little bit too long and beyond that 12,000 character limit, you have to realize that those rules will be truncated. So it might not end up being what you expected. So to avoid this truncage of your workspace rule, what you want to make sure is that the total of your global rules and local rules stay within 12,000 characters. Any rules beyond 12,000 characters will be truncated. If the AI end up summarizing it, they might lose context into some of the very strict rules that you might have defined. And this is, I believe, how you might end up with the situation where you've written very strict rules and you're surprised that those rules are not being followed, either because they might have been truncated or throughout the summarization process, the strictness of those rule importance might not be the same. There are ways for you to remove or bend things from memory in Windsurf and in Cursor. In Cursor, you can use Cursor in your, so dot .cursor in your, and they are considering adding this thing called dot .cursor bend, but this is not something that they actually have right now, but they are actively mentioning that in the documentation as something that they may address in the future if they get more demand for it. And the reason for that is because while your Cursor rules can help prevent some files from being indexed, is not a 100% guarantee. Sometimes some of those files end up being included. So what they're considering doing is adding a cursor bend that will completely remove those files from, from the list. And the way cursor actually memorizes your code, is not that it's memorizing your entire actual code. What they're if effectively doing is memorizing the embedding of this code. They process the embedding during the request, and then they, memor they save the embedding but they don't actually save your actual code base. And if you're concerned about your privacy or what kind of code get exposed, if you head over to their security page, you can see that there's a privacy mode enabled and you'll have a better transparency into what is saved by Cursor, what services sees your code during requests, and so on and so on. So this is something very important for you to look at if you're working for a company. You wanna make sure to be aware of those rules so that you have an idea of what code is being seen throughout the request. 
So again, WinServe give you a little bit more flexibility into how you manage your memories over here. I uh, wasn't be able to find a way to do that with Cursor, but if you're wondering about uh, Cursor, usually what they do is they track the history of your chat. So these chats are in memory as well for context, and I'm not sh quite sure how to actually access and delete some of my memories. I believe you can delete some of those chats. That could be one way to do that. I haven't found a way to specifically manage those memories other than removing, for example, you know, user-generated memories by removing your own rules, deleting the cursor rules files, and obviously removing your project rules. So, so that could be thought of as something similar because this is kind of how you will do it with WinSurf as well. So I guess they're a little bit similar in a sense. So this is what I wanted to cover with rules. So I believe that cursor also has probably a limitation on the number of character because when you think about it, every LLM has a context window. So the number of character that you can pass to a prompt and in order for them to pass your code and your rules, they need to make sure that they have a certain uh, amount of character that it'll allow for, for not only the code that you're sending, but also the rules that are being sent and the system prompt that is being sent. So you want to take that into consideration when making rules. If they're too long, they might not go into the context window because they might be summarized or truncated, and then some rules might be lost in within that context. And I believe that this is the main reason why sometimes the rules are not being followed. What I've personally been trying to do is making sure that I have not a long list of rules, but keeping the file quite small to make sure that my rules don't get truncated, especially if I want to make sure to have some very strict rules. I would always prioritize to put my streets rules inside of my rules, uh, global rules or project rules. This is pretty much how rules work with Cursor. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, please make sure to hit subscribe, like this video, and then check one of those videos right here, and I see you in the next one.